The Sawolu administration plans to make Lagos stand shoulder to shoulder with major cities in the world within the shortest possible time frame. Governor Sawolu says that the many revolutionary changes currently being implemented will usher in a new era of prosperity, improved infrastructure and security. According to him, by 2030, Lagos will proudly stand beside every other mega city in the world in terms of its capacity to transport its people efficiently and responsibly. Lagos will be a smart city, fully covered by a network of several thousands of kilometers of fiber optic infrastructure that will carry broadband internet into homes, offices, and schools in a technology revolution that has never been seen in this part of the world. Lagos will be home to one of the largest rice mills in the world. It will feed Nigerians through an innovative use of technology focused on processing and industry. Welcome. This is the Greater Lagos Vision. I am Love Ikuku Oyedukun. This episode features Lagos signs 25 billion naira bond to combat the effects of climate change. BOS meets business, assures stakeholders of security of investments. Drug abuse, Lagos is building the largest rehab center. Tradesmen artisans graduation, domestic and gender violence, brand icon award. Weather patterns are changing, sea levels are rising, and weather events become more extreme. A cause for worry that has sent global leaders and governments at all levels racing against time to stem the tide. Though not extreme yet, Lagos is not spared from these global warming. The state government has signed a 25 billion naira green bond as part of measures to mitigate and combat climate change. Lagos State is particularly mindful of the effects of climate change and the Sustainable Development Goals puts a responsibility on us all to protect our climate. Green bonds are a relative new funding instrument for green projects, perhaps the first line of defense against climate change. This is a signing ceremony. Lagos is also well positioned to take advantage of the infrastructure gap in Nigeria, a huge opportunity for green financing via the debt capital markets. For commerce and financial market activities and the state's incredible potential for catalyzing broad-based sustainable development call for the need to unlock and attract capital to fund key projects in this great space. The challenges with green uh, financing is the fact that they are bonds, but they're bonds that are meant for green projects. What that then means is there is a process for verifying and validating that those projects are green, and that invariably means an additional cost. And that's why this partnership is very important, because it then opens up the doorway when our partners support us for us to be able to access that funding. Governor Sawolo believes that with the project, the green bonds will assist in unlocking sustainable investment opportunities in Lagos State. It will also open the door to advance adoption of innovative new technologies. The Green Bond Framework Development Program is a critical first step towards creating a viable financing option for future green and sustainable projects. Um, so there's no doubt that the green bonds can assist in, unlo in unlocking a huge potential, a sustainable investment opportunity that we know are bound in Lagos, opening the door to advance adoption of innovative new technology, financing of projects that provide green jobs, and promoting economic and climate resilience is certainly the way to go. This signing ceremony is another show of commitment from the Sawolu administration to the overall well-being of the citizens. The Nigerian Green Bond Market Development Program was launched in the Nigerian debt capital markets in June 2018. Lagos remains safe for you and your business. That's the assurance the Sawolu government is giving to the business community in the state. The seventh edition of the Lagos Corporate Assembly tagged BOS Meets Business came at the right time. 
The Lagos Corporate Assembly tagged BOS Myths Business. Seventh in the series is a forum where the state government and the business community converge to discuss issues of shared concerns. In his keynote address, Governor Sawon Lu says the state government is abreast of the security situation and is taking all actions to guide against any unfortunate happening. One of our primary responsibilities as a government is the security of life and property. I want to assure our businesses that this is one area that we're not shying away from. This is one responsibility that I want to assure you that we're doing everything that we need to do to keep Lagos safe, to keep Lagos secure, and to make sure that your businesses and your properties are safe for you. We're the governor who briefs on the actions the, the government has yes. taken on demands presented by stakeholders at the last edition of the Assembly says the government has made efforts to touch on virtually all the issues raised. Some of the interventions he mentions are the cutting of charges, rates by 75% on water licensing permits, given five years waiver of arrears on water licensing and permits, amongst others. Over, over the year, I'm part of a... Uh, uh, our own developmental agenda. You know, we are, we are aware of what we're doing with our metropolitan fiber optics. We've, we've actually um, done about 2,000 kilometers of fiber docks infrastructure in, in the states. Um, we're hoping that we can achieve the, the 3,000 before the middle of next year, whilst meaning that we can have better fiber connectivity, you know, in all of the nooks and crannies of, of the state, which will certainly improve you know, broadband penetration. In her remarks, the State's Commissioner for Ministry of Commerce, Industry and Cooperatives, Lola Akonde, says the Assembly has been able to reinvent and strengthen the relationship between the state government and the organized private sector. At this time, when the COVID-19 pandemic is ravaging the world, discussions on the establishment of a new type of strategic partnership, more dialogue, and exchanges between government and the organized private sector will revitalize businesses in the state. She also told the gathering that with the advent of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA, Lagos is now well positioned to engage commercially with other African nations to boost exports and create jobs in the states. With the advent of the Africa Continental Free Trade after Lagos is positioned to engage commercially with other African nations to boost exports and create jobs in the state. You may please note that there are remarkable potentials at the lucky free zone which provides needed support for the organized private sector for improved access to exportation of goods and services if effectively utilized. The administration of Mr. Governor has continued to invest in the needed infrastructure, just such as the trailer park and color pub in Apapa, several economically critical roads and rails across the entire state, the BRT system, among others, to enhance business development along the KFA corridor and in Lagos State in general. I want to implore us to make use of these infrastructures wisely and appreciate them. All these are legacies that Mr. Governor is playing and as one put by Gary Benachok, and I quote, please think about your legacy because you are writing it every day, unquote. I therefore ask us this question, what will be our legacy? Is it to build or to destroy? Also, the administration of Mr. Governor, Mr. Babajis Olushala Sonwolu, we continue to create an atmosphere of peace, safety, and all-encompassing security conducive for businesses to flourish. And we take every step necessary to deliver on our promises of a safe, secure, and viable business environment in Lagos State. In her summation, the president, Lagos Chamber of Commerce, Toki Mabogunje, says the private sector has a central role in the actualization of the vision of a mega city and making Lagos a 21st century economy. The recognition of the role of the organized private sector in the realization of the economic, socio-economic objectives of Lagos State 
Our role as the private sector is critical to the delivery of results both within the context of the Lagos megacity agenda and the transformation of the state as a greater Lagos. We thank you for sustaining this program and for the opportunity to speak on corporate and industrial issues in Lagos. In his presentation, the Chief Executive Officer, Lekki Worldwide Investment Limited, Dr. Tunde Shodade, said for the business orientation of the Lekki Free Trade Zone, infrastructure development strategies applied for the zone is one private public partnership, PPP, adding that the zone has been developed as a city within a city. The youth can be risk takers who oftentimes do not recognize the consequences of their actions. The growing number of youth involved in drugs has become alarming. The state government is working on combating the scourge of drug abuse within the society. A comprehensive rehabilitation center to give a new lease of life to drug addicts is in the works. As a government, we recognize the value of collaboration and engagement. The use of psychoactive substances among young people in Nigeria is assuming a worrisome dimension. Causes have been traced to peer pressure and the desire to exploit. This press conference by the Lagos State Government is to discuss ways to mitigate these causes and the harmful effects. The birth of this lofty Special advice to the Governor on Sustainable the Development US, Goals and Investment, Sholak B. Hammond, leaks the conference. She introduces a plan for the largest rehabilitation centers in Africa. Perhaps the Lagos State SDG's Youth Alliance is a platform to the rescue. And so this is something that the state takes very, very seriously. Um, so the Ministry of Youth uh, and Social Development has developed a handbook that we're all you know, working to implement. There will be a lot of interventions around uh, drug abuse. We are building one of the largest drug rehabilitation centers in Africa um, currently as we speak. Youths are supposed to be change agents, but many of them have been destroyed by drug abuse, rendering them unproductive. But the Lagos State Government is all out to bring these menace to its knees. Certainly we're starting a new journey and shaping an exciting future by enabling young people to immerse in a, in a social reality and responsibility that will help unleash a new tribe of citizens that are committed to common good. Ladies and gentlemen, we are poised to make this movement a special purpose vehicle that will drive a society of resourceful youth whose potentials are, to be, are yet to be, are to be harnessed to drive the greater Lagos ambition by channeling their energy, education, intellect, and resourcefulness towards positive engagement for a better future. I think for the first time, Lagos State is the first government in, in Nigeria to initiate an idea around the SDGs, and specifically for the youth to be driven by them, to be led by them. And we went through so much in terms of research and you know, identification of people, young people who are actually leading the way in so many areas of life. And this speaks to why we have different um, young people from different areas of life. These are resourceful young people who are committing their time, their energy, their know-how into the attainment of um, SDGs in Lagos State. And they are not only doing that for self, they are also looking at areas where the government can accelerate its efforts, areas where gaps have been identified. So they are helping us to, to um, plug many of those areas. Speaking on why they resolved to join the alliance, some of the champions expressed delight over the program, saying it would be a great platform to engage with government. A filmmaker and producer Jumoke Odetola stated that with the alliance, they hope to look back after the program and be happy. The SDG is, is a project I'm very passionate about because it's about humanity and humanity is life. It is one for all, all for one. It is a projection that would enrich lives. It is a projection that would, um, it's for posterity. It's for everyone. It's for lives, human lives, animals, and everything living. Now, 
Having a substantive engagement with young women and men, no doubt, will improve the efforts of the Lagos State Government to establish positive influence on the society. This is the Greater Lagos Vision. The program returns shortly. Please stay with us. Technology has impacted everyday life. Artisans and technicians, all spheres of endeavors, now have solutions to improve their productivity. Artisans in Lagos State have been advised to stay abreast of emerging trends in their line of work. That way, they will not be left behind by technology. This was Governor Sawolu's charge at the 12th edition of the Tracemen and Artisans Day celebration recently in Lagos. You know they use me. Technology and innovation are pivotal to economic development. At least 2,000 upskilled artisans participated in the year 2021 free training. Welcome, it's good to have you in the house as well. You're welcome. I'm a motor mechanic. As I go the training, I, I know some things where I don't know about my work. I know some things where I don't know the time where I did on uh, school or the time where I, did, where, I, where I learned the work. All the things I know, I don't know. I know about it. I thank God for the occasion because I'm the one of uh, electric uh, Tyler Association of Nigeria. So I thank God for today because I'm not even expecting all this. But I thank uh, governor for all those uh, improvement instruments that he produ produced for us. Eight weeks of intensive technology-driven training to make them 21st century compliant, thanks to the Ministry of Wealth Creation and Employment. The informal sector is the engine that drives the economy. It therefore becomes imperative for Lagos artisans to work towards the realization of a common purpose, which is creating 21st century artisan for sustainable economic development. But getting the training is not enough. These graduates must stay in tune with emerging trends from around the world. They must constantly anticipate the direction in which their various areas of practice might be headed. Internet and digital technology has come to stay. And I can see that my tradesmen and artisans are also now becoming digitalized. They are becoming in tune with the reality of the 21st century. They are ready for the future. Is that not so? The artisans that are in Lagos are ready to take the future forward. And so that's why you can see that what Lagos State is about is to help you realize that future from today. Now... Presentation of awards to outstanding individuals and trade associations. Hardly does a day go by without some form of sexual abuse and domestic violence being committed. It is projected that one in every four girls will be abused before the age of 18, while one in every 10 boys will also be abused before the same age. A total of 10,007 cases of domestic violence and sexual abuse of adults and children were reported between May 2019 till August 26, 2021 in Lagos alone. However, the Lagos state government is committed to reversing these disturbing trends. According to the United Nations, an estimated 736 million women, which represents one in three people globally, have been subjected to one form of violence or the other, at least once in their lifetime. In Lagos State, Nigeria, the story is not different, as not less than 10,007 cases of domestic and sexual violence against adults and children have been recorded. At least... An average of 150 new cases of domestic violence are recorded on a monthly basis. At this media parley, 
Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice Muyo Shiri Onigbanjo says during the period under review, the Directorate of Public Prosecutions secured over 365 convictions for various sexual offences. He speaks on various training platforms put in place to create awareness on the vice and reduce the trend. During this period, we have also been able to leverage on technology while responding to sexual and gender-based violence with the support from the joint e European Union-funded Spotlight Initiative. Onik Bajo, who fronts at stigmatization against victims of sexual abuse, calls on parents to speak out while warning that 21 years imprisonment are with perpetrators. There is no stigma attached to this. They, they, are, they need all our support, they need all our assistance. There is no stigma attached to it. They must report abuse. It's not normal. We must get people to start thinking that. This behavior, this deviant behavior is not normal. It's not normal for a father to abuse his daughter or for, or, or for anybody to abuse a minor, whether male or female. The penalties are in the law, rape, defilement, life imprisonment, 21 years jail. Earlier, he announced the launch of the Domestic and Sexual Violence Case Management Service Portal, which he said was designed to manage cases and also serve as a reporting tool accessible on both web and mobile applications. The Board of Marketing Edge, Nigeria's leading brand and marketing publication, recently conferred the political brand icon of the year on Governor Babajide Sawunlu. This was in recognition of the handling of the COVID-19 pandemic in Lagos State. The award also commended his administration's laudable strides in health, education and infrastructure. Marketing stakeholders gathered here for their air summit with the theme, Rethinking the Blue Ocean Strategy in our Sensitive Times. It's a celebration of craft and achievements of marketing professionals with industry practitioners across the country in attendance. Award presentations to deserving citizens also takes a highlight. The organizers believe that the recipients are change agents promoting future fit businesses in the new normal. Congratulations uh, to the awardees tonight. I have no doubt that you deserve your awards, that's why you are here. You are at the table because you, pay, you paid your dues. All I can say is that I wish you all the very best. Lagos State Chief Marketer, Governor Babajide Sawolu is one of the deserving awardees. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, is being honored today as the outstanding political brand icon of the year. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the irrepressible, the for emotional connection with the electorate, for creating a city in which brand and advertising industry thrives, for these and many more. He promises his commitment to the growth of the profession by sustaining the state's investment in requisite infrastructure. Laying this fiber will not only make your work a lot easier, it will give the quality of the output of your work, it will make it stronger and better. And you'll be able to compete, you know, with every other player in the world. You don't need to go on the flash drive. These areas that will make up marketing. At the center of what we do as marketing professionals is creativity. And that is what our government is. Many people believe that Nigeria's advertising industry is one of the best in the world. And perhaps encouragements like these are factors motivating the practitioners and the government in our commercial capital to make the industry what it is today. That's all we have for you in this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision on Plus TV Africa. I'm Lovi Kuku Oyedoku. Bye for now. <laughs>